Good evening, this is Will with Cigar Coop, and I'm here with two very special guests um, from a company called Can I Have Your Attention? And uh, you may never hear of them as a cigar company, but I actually work with um, a very popular cigar company called uh, Tarano Family Cigars, and they've really been involved with a lot of the marketing and packaging around that cigar. Um, as far as, you know, on Cigar Coop, we talk a lot about um, a cigar appearance, and I always like to describe the bands, because I think there's a story in a lot of the bands. I happen to meet these two gentlemen today at the IPCPR show. Um, I have Cleveland and Umberto um, here, and we're just going to talk a little about what they do, um, a little about uh, what they've done for Tarano, and uh, get, get some other perspectives. So thanks, guys, for taking some time. Thanks for having us. Um, so why don't you just tell us a little about your company? Uh, well, we started out uh, coming up on five years. And, uh, the company's been, uh, been around for five years. We're, we're really a, a uh, boutique uh, advertising agency. And um, uh, having a background in cigars, I'm from Nicaragua personally. Um, it was just uh, uh, second nature on, on a personal level uh, to, to get involved with cigars. Uh, grandfather, my dad, uh, it's just uh, it, it's part of our culture, uh, so to speak. Um, so rooted in, in the cigar industry, uh, it was um, really uh, just uh, second nature for us to uh, excel with uh, the latest uh, in, in, in the packaging cigar bands. Last year, this year, we were able to do some great things uh, for Charlie uh, and the rest of the Toronto gang as far as the packaging, launching of the new products at the IPCPR. Why, why do you think it's so important to have uh, the right packaging, the right banding around a cigar? Well, that's, that's, uh, there's two things that you have. You have the personality and you have the appearance. The, the first thing that the consumer sees when they see the cigar is either in the magazine or word of mouth. So I think uh, if you don't have that word of mouth, if you don't have a friend recommending it or you don't have a local cigar shop that somebody can say, hey, try this, the only thing you do have is print or web or, or whatever media is out there. And that visual impact is the only thing that makes you want to try. It's that desire that draws you in. And, and, and listen, uh, I think Toronto has over 16 different uh, cigar lines in their portfolio, and they all have their unique uh, personality, uh, you know, price point, demographics, who they are targeting uh, with that uh, particular uh, new line. And I think that's where we come in. We interpret what they want to um, establish and, and what market share they want to uh, appeal to. So that's, that's all part of you know, each brand, each hit its own line of, of uh, look and feel, so to speak. How long ago did you start with Charlie? Uh, we came on board uh, as uh, 2010, so it's been two years now. So were you involved with the uh, rebranding as far as with Tarano Family Cigars? And, yes. And that? From the ground up. Okay, so what was a little bit into the background as far as that, that brand went? What was some of the input you guys gave as far as that went? Well, you know, it, uh, you know with, with Carlos Sr. retiring and, and, and Charlie taking over the company, it, it, you know, there, were, there was a lot happening in 2010. They were taking the sales and the distribution back, and it was really a, a rebirth for Toronto. It was a changing of the guard as yeah. well, internal. So the, there was a new color palette, new logo. There were new uh, brands coming in on board. Uh, so it was really a, a, a complete redesign from the ground up. But while also uh, respecting the history that had already been established and the consumer base that already knew Toronto as, as, as it was. So it was basically uh, bringing in, bringing back the old consumers and introducing it to a new audience. Absolutely, and that makes me think of the Loyal, which I thought was a really uh, fascinating uh, band and packaging you put together. Why don't you guys talk a little about that? Loyal, um, you know, uh, what, what Carlos Sr. wanted to do with Loyal, and I think what was accomplished was that uh, they wanted to introduce a, a cigar line that was your everyday smoke. He truly believes that a, a good smoke at a good price should be within the reach of everyone. Your everyday smoke, you could always fall back on a Toronto and you know the quality is going to be there. Price point is going to be there. It's just a, a very reliable smoke, your everyday smoke. And, uh, you know, the packaging for that, uh, it, it, was, it was very industrial. It was very, um, uh, very streamlined very uh, retro, so to speak, very art deco. 
and it was kind of a marriage of, of the old and the new and the passing of the, the changing of the guard, the old guard to the new guard. So that was kind of like a, a nice uh, um, uh, honoring, I yes. guess, of Toronto to Toronto. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, I agree with that. How about Vault? Uh, Vault, Vault followed Royal. Vault, uh, you know, Vault was uh, was a different uh, was a different project altogether. Vault is is very elaborate. It's got a different price point. Uh, the packaging was completely different. It was very ornate, um, and um, uh, you know, the bands came from overseas, uh, so it's uh, you know a lot of powder, a lot of shine. Uh, and, and just uh, again, it, it retails for about seven ninety five a stick. So the approach with Vault was very different. And what, what's nice with, uh, with with the projects that we do with the owners is that it's a lot of back and forth. It's not just we take over your company and this is what you get. There's there's input almost daily on on something like that. And Vault uh, in particular, that was that was a very important. Vault launch. is a, is a medium to full body cigar opposed to the Loyal, which is a, a medium right. smoke. Absolutely, absolutely. And then um, this year, Charlie's introduced the uh, the new Master Maduro. And you kind of had to follow the existing master, but you kind of had to align with some of the uh, packaging and design with the original, and then tie the Maduro into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and, and Maduro is it, it, the new master Maduro. It's um, it, it, it's a project that was brewed in house. We are lucky enough to be working side by side with Felipe Sosa, who is Torano's master roller, and he had a lot of input on what the new look and feel for the Master Maduro line was going to be. So having him on board really expedited the project, and uh, what you see is what you get. This is uh, hands-on. Yeah, and you, you, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say that that's something where uh, in, in building a, uh, a year after year with a company, you, you, you get a... Uh, a rapport with a company and, and you, you understand where they're coming from and where they need to go. So with something like that, um, you build off of that. We would, we'd, we had, I think we had adopted that right. brand from, from another company. So we had to work with what we got from them. We established something and then we built from that. And that's where a company, uh, like Can I Have Your Attention or any company that any cigar industry deals with, once you have that vocabulary established, you can build and grow, and that's the important thing that I think uh, uh, any cigar manufacturer needs to know. Absolutely. Now, how, was this your first venture with a cigar manufacturer as far as working with them, with what you do? Actually, um, we had worked previously uh, with uh, uh, Willie Herrera from uh, El Titan, right. uh, who is now with uh, Drew Estates. Um, we had done uh, some uh, rebranding of El Titan and uh, we had done some advertising uh, for them. Uh, we had done some print media. Um, so it, uh, it, it, there was some, something established prior to Toronto. How do you like being a part of the cigar industry? I mean, it's a very important role that you guys play, and how do you like just being a part of it? Well, I think, I, I think uh, you know, <laughs> from, from the, from the uh, manufacturing plants down in Nicaragua all the way up to the uh, CEOs that are running the cigar industry now. It's a younger generation. We see that with Toronto. Uh, we see uh, you know, a senior passing the torch on to Charlie. And I think as a younger generation leading the cigar industry, and just the fact that, that we are able to contribute to that, it, it's great. I think it's very important in, in, the, in the passing of the garden, the passing <coughs> of the media as well. You know, you, you've come from print. Print is still important. However, all the media is just as, as your website and everything that's out there, that's where it's going to. And that's where branding, advertising, it's all important. Exactly. Exactly. So you guys are already hard at work for 2013? Yes. Actually, we've, looking we've already, we already got our marching orders. So. Looking forward to Vegas next year. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, I really appreciate you guys taking the time and um, look forward to seeing some more of your great work. Thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate your time. All right, this is Thank Will you. signing off.